and welcome back to Rock School. We were playing something just then in a style that became very popular in the early 1980s and was known as new music or synth pop. <laughs> Influenced by the earlier work of the Yellow Magic Orchestra from Japan, seen here playing in 1979, and craft work from West Germany, bands like the Human League and Depeche Mode created a distinctive sound based on synthesizers and heavily reliant on sequencing. That is the ability to replay previously programmed patterns at the touch of a button. Synth pop was perhaps the first popular style to be based entirely on the use of synthesizer and sequencer technology, built on an interweaving of simple melodic lines against a background of bass and drum sequences. Now, the harmony was created not by the playing of block chords on any one single instrument, but by the meshing together of these lines. The chord changes were implicit in the song. As such, this was incredibly attractive because you could sound good playing with one hand or even with one finger. Synthesizer technology is important to synth pop because by using interesting sounds you can give life to very simple melodies. In our opening piece we were using five different sounds. Deirdre was playing a slow three note melody which combined three keyboards via MIDI to produce this powerful sound. The two digital synths were both split down the middle so that we got two different sounds on each. Alice and I played both these. And Henry, just to be flash, played both this bass line and this other line in the middle. The drum machine was programmed to coincide with the arrangement of the tune, and then it was set to MIDI clock so that it could be triggered by the keyboard sequencer. So how do you make up these single note melodies? Well, you could just play whatever sounds right, and that's fine. However, you might find that new ideas come to you a little bit easier with a little knowledge of scales. This, for instance, is C major. This. Isn't. In fact, I don't know what that was. The reason it sounded so obviously different, even though I started and stopped on the same notes, was that it didn't conform to the correct major scale step pattern. Now, when Alistair says step pattern, he means the distance between two adjacent notes of the scale first and second, second and third, etc. Now, the smallest interval or distance that you can have is a semitone or half step. And on the guitar and bass, it's the distance between one fret, like this. It sounds something like this. Now, the next largest interval is a tone or whole step. Now, that's the distance between two frets. You're probably used to hearing this sound a lot in rock. Now, the major scale is simply made up of whole and half steps. The step pattern is three, four. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Now you can play a major scale starting on any note, as long as you keep this unique pattern. Now you may not think that the C major scale is the most exciting set of notes from which to make up a song, but you can always try changing around the order of the notes. <laughs> <laughs> 